In this lesson, we'll learn about the sheen component of your material and how to create realistic fabric shaders using the sheen component. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course V-Ray 5 Masterclass, your complete guide to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. It's a massive 15 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of V-Ray 4 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. If you take a look at this reference photo, you can start to see what makes fabrics look like fabrics. Look how the faces or polygons that are parallel to our viewing direction direction are darker and the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction become fuzzier and brighter. If you can simulate this, you can get realistic fabric shaders. And this is what sheen component is supposed to do. It is basically simulating microfibers and cloth like surfaces or any sort of fuzziness on face or on fruits and so on. First, let's select the fabric geometry. Open up the material editor. Create a new V-Ray material and assign it. Now we can run the IPR. For a realistic fabric shader, you only need the diffuse and the sheen component plus any bump, normal or displacement mapping. For more advanced fabrics, sometimes you can mix in the reflection as well. To better see the sheen contribution, let's change the diffuse color to a dark gray with the RGB values of around 15. And in the sheen component, set the sheen color to white. We immediately get that fuzziness at glancing angles. You notice how the parallel faces to our viewing direction are showing the defined darker diffuse color and the perpendicular faces are showing the defined white sheen color. In addition to that white color, sheen component also adds that feeling of fuzziness and cloth by simulating microfibers. We have the sheen color that controls the color of the microfibers and generally this should be a brighter, less saturated version of the diffuse color. For now, let's keep it at white. We also have this sheen glossiness, which modulates how much the microfibers diverge from the surface normal direction. Basically, uh, using the glossiness value, you can control where that fuzziness begins. By decreasing it, it begins at lower angles from the parallel faces, and by increasing it, the fuzziness starts at higher angles from the parallel faces. Let me change the white sheen color to a light pink color, just to see the effect a bit better. If I set the glossiness to 0.9, you see how the sheen effect is limited to very extreme glancing angles. And if set to something like uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 or 0.2, now that sheen effect is more widespread and starts earlier. So that's about the sheen component. Now let's make some realistic fabric shaders using it. First, uh, we try to create a purple velvet shader. So create a new V-Ray material and assign it to the geometry. For the diffuse color, use this dark purple with the RGB values of nine, five, and eight. You notice it doesn't look like fabric at all because we still don't have that previously described attributes of fabrics. And for the sheen color, let's use a brighter, less saturated color compared to our diffuse color. We can actually just copy uh, the diffuse color and just increase its value and decrease its saturation. The exact RGB values that I want are 232, 119, and 217. Now we can work with the sheen glossiness value to get what we want. If I use lower values, you notice it doesn't look like velvet. But as soon as I start using hard glossiness values like 0.8 or 0.9, it looks and feels immediately like velvet. Probably something like 0.85 would be nice for here. Let's also add a denoiser render element to get fast noise free results while we are working on these velvet shaders. In this case, I'll be changing the denoising engine to NVIDIA AI denoiser. For faster results, normally in the look dev process of your project, you want to use NVIDIA AI denoiser as it is obviously faster but less accurate but for the final render change the engine to v-ray denoiser as it is more accurate 
and now as you can see we get this nice velvet shader now if i want to get a bluish greenish teal velvet shader all i have to do is to change the diffuse and the sheen color so let's create a copy of the purple velvet and assign it to the geometry change the diffuse color to this dark teal with the rgb values of 2 7 and 11 And the sheen color should be brighter and less saturated version of the same color with the RGB values of uh, 111, 153, and 185. If we bring up the reference picture again and zoom in a tad, you notice we have this fabric pattern throughout. So let's add this pattern as well. We'll be doing it through bump mapping. So let me duplicate the blue velvet shader and assign the new shader. Add a Vray bitmap node. And load this fabric 02 texture. We want to use this as the bump map and also as we are in ACES it would be a good idea to set the RGB color space to raw and as it is going to be a bump map input or a data input that's why we change the RGB color space to raw as we discussed it in the ACES lesson in the introduction section of the course. So connect it to the bump map input of a very normal map and connect the normal map to the bump input of the very material. I'm going to set the tiling of the fabric texture to 0.2 and 0.2 so it sits a bit larger on the surface. For now we can decrease the denoiser opacity to see the texture a bit better or just completely disable it as we work on more detailed textures and the denoiser kind of tends to take some detail. Now the texture seems a bit blurred because of the pre-filtering that Vray bitmap applies. In the Vray bitmap, to get a sharper image, we can decrease the filter multiplier to something like 0.5 just to make it a bit sharper. We can also control the bump amount in the Vray normal map if we wanted to. But in this case, one probably would be enough. Now let's see what we get. And now we have this beautiful fabric pattern as well. Very nice. Now let's create a crushed velvet, something like this photo right here. So we need two base velvet shaders. One should be fairly brighter than the other one. Then we mix the two to get the final crushed velvet look using a black and white texture. So let's duplicate the simple teal velvet material. And this will be our darker velvet shader. Now simply duplicate it again. And this one will be the brighter velvet shader. And now we can use brighter diffuse and sheen colors compared to our base color. I'm going to change the diffuse color to 7, 23, and 36, which is brighter compared to our diffuse color from our previous material, and change the sheen color to 128, 177, and 214. Now we have a darker and a brighter velvet shader. Now to blend or mix these two materials, we will need a very blend material, which allows us to blend up to 10 materials. So let's add one and assign it to our fabric geometry. Connect the darker velvet material as the base material and use the brighter version as the coat one material. Right now, because this mix color is set to gray, we get 50% of our base material and 50% of our coat material. If it was black, we would only see the base material. And if it was completely white, we would only see the coat or the brighter material. But for now, let's set it to gray. Now we can use a map to control the mix. And that is what gives us that crushed velvet look. I'm going to add a very bitmap node. And load this BW8 texture. 
as it is a data input and not a color input like diffuse color or reflection color and we are in aces we can change the rgb color space to a raw and use it as the blend one input now where the map is white the brighter material will show up and where it is black the darker material will show up we probably need to set the tiling to something like 0.2 and 0.2 so it sits bigger on the surface now let's see what we get and now we have this nice crushed velvet shader next let's create a simple upholstery cut and fabric shader i'm going to create a new very material and assign it we can duplicate the fabric texture and as this will be used as our diffuse color we can set its rgb color space to srgb and connect it to the diffuse color we want to use the same image for the sheen color as well but we want it to be brighter compared to diffuse color texture so connect it to a color correction map and now we can connect the color correct map to the sheen color input of the very material and to make the texture quite brighter we can simply change to this advanced mode and increase the rgb gamma to 3 in the color correct node so we get uh, a quite brighter version of our original texture and now let's set the sheen glossiness maybe to something like 0.7 this time Now for the bump map, connect the original fabric texture to the bump input of a very normal node. And use the normal node as the bump input. Now we can increase the bump height to something like 1 or even 2. As we want to make the bumpiness a bit more prominent let's see what we get and here is our beautiful realistic cotton while we are here let's create a colored version of this simply duplicate the whole shader by holding shift plus control and assign the new shader i'm going to add a composite node which allows you to layer up textures and rgba inputs use the fabric texture as layer one input add a new layer in the composite map we want to use a simple color for the second layer to do that we can load a very color node and here let's change its color to this light brown with the rgb values of 82 61 and 58 and we can change the color space to srgb as we are in aces and this is a basically a color input which is the diffuse color and connect this very color node to layer 2 input now in the composite map change the blending mode for the second layer to difference you can actually see a preview of the composite node if i just stop the ipr and this is normal blending mode and now this is a difference and this gives us what we want now we can use this composite map as our diffuse color and also as the input to the color correction node that is connected to the sheen color if you remember this color correction node basically makes the whole texture brighter and suitable for the sheen color we can run the ipr again For this to look better, let's decrease the sheen glossiness to something like 0.6 to make the fuzziness a bit more visible. Now let's see what we get. And there you have it. Uh, you can skip the rest of the lesson as I'll be just creating one more complex fabric shader. It's not really complex, but we're not going to be using the sheen component, only the diffuse color with uh, the help of some curves. So let's go for a satin look. Uh, for this one we won't be utilizing the sheen component as i mentioned as for satin if we take a look at this reference picture 
You notice satin is different and the highlights are kind of playing with you. There is no well-defined pattern that you can describe, but I have a pretty good formula to create highly realistic satin or silk shaders and it involves curves. Let's create a new UV material and assign it to the fabric geometry. For silk, first we need a falloff map. Let's load it and connect it to our diffuse color. Falloff map outputs zero or black for the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction and one or white for the parallel faces to our viewing direction. But we want to be able to remap these values. We need to use this mix curve to do exactly that. Now using this curve, we can remap these values to whatever we want. There is a particular curve that results in a very, very close look to satin or silk. We are trying to put the um, highest and the brightest values to be a bit off of the exact uh, parallel angles to our viewing direction, making the very frontal angles a bit brighter at something like uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. And a curve like this should give us a silk-like look, just needs a bit more work to make it better. I do have this kind of falloff map that I created before the lesson, which has a better curve. Let's use this falloff map instead. And this should give us a really nice satin shader, as you can see. The next thing would be to incorporate the specific colors that we are looking for. We can simply change the black and the white color in the falloff map to do that. Let's say we want to create a turquoise kind of green satin. The black color will get the darker shade and the white will get the lighter shade of the same turquoise color. I'm going to change the black color to this turquoise color with the RGB values of 19, 37, and 44 and for the white color we'll use a lighter shade of that same turquoise color with the rgb values of 100 150 and 179 and voila we have a very realistic satin shader so that's about the sheen component of the Viri material and how to create realistic fabric shaders in Viri for 3ds Max. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, Viri, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.